Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel, Kachpal A Learnings. In this video we are going to study about suspension dosage form. So let's start. Contents covered in this video are Definition, Advantages, Disadvantages, Classification of Suspension, Preparation of Suspension, and Stability Problems with the Method to Overcome. Now Definition of Suspension in pharmaceutics, a suspension refers to a type of pharmaceutical dosage form where solid particles are dispersed within a liquid medium. These solid particles are usually insoluble in the liquid and can settle over time due to their larger size and weight. To prevent settling, suspensions typically require shaking or gentle agitation before use. Suspensions are often used when certain drugs or active ingredients cannot be easily dissolved in a liquid due to their physical or chemical properties. Advantages First, flexibility in dose. Suspensions allow for more precise dose adjustment, as the solid particles can be suspended uniformly in the liquid, enabling accurate measurement of the desired dose. Second, taste masking. Suspensions can be used to mask the unpleasant taste of certain drugs, making them more palatable and easier to administer, especially for pediatric patients or individuals who have difficulty swallowing tablets or capsules. Third, stability. Some drugs are inherently unstable in solution, but can remain stable when formulated as suspensions. This can extend the shelf life of the medication and improve its effectiveness. Fourth, controlled release. Suspensions can be formulated to provide controlled or sustained release of the active ingredient, allowing for a prolonged therapeutic effect and potentially reducing the dosing frequency. Disadvantages First, settling. One of the major disadvantages of suspensions is the tendency for solid particles to settle at the bottom of the container over time. This requires the user to shake the container before use which might not always lead to even distribution of the particles. Second, unhomogeneity. Even with thorough shaking, it can be challenging to achieve complete and consistent dispersion of the solid particles throughout the liquid, leading to potential variations in dosing. Third, physical instability. Suspensions can be prone to physical instability, including particle aggregation, coalescence, or flocculation, which could alter the therapeutic effectiveness and appearance of the product. Fourth, palatability issues. While suspensions can help mask the taste of certain drugs, they might still not be entirely palatable, leading to issues with patient compliance, especially in pediatric or geriatric populations. Fifth, manufacturing complexity. The formulation and manufacturing of stable suspensions can be more complex compared to other dosage forms such as tablets or capsules, requiring precise control of particle size, distribution, and stability. Sixth, Storage considerations. Suspensions often require careful storage conditions to prevent settling and other stability issues. Temperature changes, exposure to light, and other factors can impact the stability of the suspension. Classifications. Suspensions can be classified based on various criteria, including the type of solid particles, the nature of the dispersing medium, and the intended use. Here are some common classifications of suspensions with examples. First, based on solid particle characteristics. Under this, a. Cause suspensions. These suspensions contain large solid particles that are visible to the naked eye. They require substantial shaking to achieve uniformity. Example, calamine lotion, where finely powdered zinc oxide is suspended in a liquid medium for topical use. B. Fine suspensions. These suspensions contain smaller solid particles, usually on the micron scale, and tend to settle more slowly. Example, ibuprofen suspension, where micronized ibuprofen particles are dispersed in a liquid medium for oral administration. Second, based on dispersing medium, under this, a. Aqueous suspensions. These suspensions are prepared using water as the primary dispersing medium. Example, amoxicillin suspension, used to deliver antibiotics to children who might have difficulty swallowing tablets. b. Non-aqueous suspensions. 
These suspensions use a non-aqueous liquid as the dispersing medium. Example, hydrocortisone acetate suspension in oil used for intramuscular injections. Third, based on intended use. Under this, A. Oral suspensions. These suspensions are intended for oral administration. Example, antacid suspensions containing aluminum hydroxide and magnesium hydroxide to alleviate heartburn. B. Topical suspensions. These suspensions are applied externally on the skin. Example, calamine lotion used to soothe skin irritation and itching. C. Injectable suspensions. These suspensions are formulated for injection into the body. Example, insulin suspensions used to manage diabetes by regulating blood sugar levels. Fourth, based on stability in settling. Under this, A. Flocculated suspensions. These suspensions have particles that form loose aggregates, making them easier to redisperse upon shaking. Example, Kaolin suspension used to treat diarrhea by absorbing toxins in the gastrointestinal tract. B. Deflocculated suspensions. In these suspensions, the particles remain individualized, leading to slower settling. Example, bentonite suspension used in skincare products for its ability to absorb excess oil and impurities. Now let's see in detail about each classification. First, cause suspensions. Definition, cause suspensions contain larger solid particles that are visible to the naked eye and require substantial shaking to achieve uniformity. Example, calamine lotion containing finely powdered zinc oxide suspended in a liquid medium. It's used for soothing skin irritations. Preparation. This involves dispersion of solid. The solid particles are dispersed in a portion of the dispersing medium, e.g., water, with continuous stirring using a mechanical mixer. Wetting and incorporation. The solid is wetted with a wetting agent to facilitate its incorporation into the dispersing medium. Particle size reduction. If needed, if the particles are too large, they might need to be reduced in size using methods such as milling or grinding. Addition of remaining dispersing medium. The rest of the dispersing medium is added while continuing to mix, resulting in a coarse suspension. Packaging. The final suspension is packaged in appropriate containers. Second, fine suspensions. Definition. Fine suspensions contain smaller solid particles that settle more slowly compared to coarse suspensions. Example. Ibuprofen suspension, where micronized ibuprofen particles are dispersed in a liquid medium for oral administration. Preparation. This involves dispersion and wetting. Similar to coarse suspensions, the solid particles are dispersed in a portion of the dispersing medium with continuous stirring. Particle size reduction. Fine suspensions often involve the use of micronization techniques to ensure smaller particle size. Addition of remaining dispersing medium. The rest of the dispersing medium is added, and the mixture is homogenized to achieve a stable fine suspension. Stabilizers. Stabilizing agents such as surfactants or polymers might be added to prevent particle aggregation. Quality control. Particle size distribution and stability tests are conducted. Packaging. The final fine suspension is packaged. Third, aqueous suspensions. Definition. Aqueous suspensions are prepared using water as the primary dispersing medium. Example, amoxicillin suspension, used to deliver antibiotics to children who might have difficulty swallowing tablets. Preparation. This involves dispersion. Solid particles are dispersed in water with agitation. Wetting and incorporation. Wetting agents can be added to facilitate uniform dispersion. Particle size control. Particle size reduction might be necessary to ensure adequate suspension stability. Stabilization. Stabilizers can be added to prevent particle settling and aggregation. Homogenization. The mixture is homogenized to achieve uniform particle distribution. Quality testing. The suspension undergoes tests for particle size, stability, and overall quality. Packaging. The aqueous suspension is packaged in appropriate containers. Fourth, non-aqueous suspensions. Definition. Non-aqueous suspensions use a non-aqueous liquid as the dispersing medium. Example, 
Hydrocortisone acetate suspension in oil used for intramuscular injections. Preparation. This involve dispersion. Solid particles are dispersed in a non-aqueous liquid, e.g., oil with agitation. Wetting in incorporation. Similar to aqueous suspensions, wetting agents can aid in dispersion. Particle size control. Ensuring proper particle size distribution is crucial for stability. Stabilization. Stabilizers are added to prevent settling and maintain uniformity. Homogenization. The suspension is homogenized to ensure even distribution of particles. Quality control. The suspension undergoes testing for stability, particle size, and quality. Packaging. The non-aqueous suspension is packaged appropriately. Fifth. Oral suspensions. Definition. Oral suspensions are intended for oral administration. Preparation. Preparation methods for oral suspensions are similar to the aqueous and non-aqueous suspension processes mentioned earlier, with the focus on ensuring proper particle size, uniformity, stability, and palatability. Example. Antacid suspensions containing aluminum hydroxide and magnesium hydroxide to alleviate heartburn. Sixth, topical suspensions. Definition. Topical suspensions are applied externally on the skin. Preparation. Similar to the processes for other suspensions, the preparation of topical suspensions involves proper dispersion, particle size control, stabilization, and quality control. Example. Calamine lotion, used to soothe skin irritation and itching. Seventh. Injectable suspensions. Definition. Injectable suspensions are formulated for injection into the body. Preparation. Injectable suspensions require even higher standards of sterility, particle size control, and stability, given their use in direct patient administration. Example. Insulin suspensions, used to manage diabetes by regulating blood sugar levels. Eighth. Flocculated suspensions. Definition. Flocculated suspensions have particles that form loose aggregates, making them easier to redisperse upon shaking. Example, Kaolin suspension, used to treat diarrhea by absorbing toxins in the gastrointestinal tract. Preparation. This involve dispersion and wetting. Solid particles are dispersed in the dispersing medium while ensuring proper wetting using a wetting agent. Addition of electrolytes. Electrolytes of flocculating agents are added to induce particle flocculation by neutralizing surface charges. Gentle mixing. The suspension is gently mixed to allow flocculation without causing irreversible aggregation. Stabilization. Stabilizers might be added to prevent excessive flocculation and settling. Packaging. The final flocculated suspension is packaged. Ninth. Deflocculated suspensions. Definition. The flocculated suspensions have particles that remain individualized, leading to slower settling. Example, bentonite suspension, used in skincare products for its ability to absorb excess oil and impurities. Preparation. This involve dispersion and wetting. Solid particles are dispersed in the dispersing medium while ensuring proper wetting using a wetting agent. Addition of electrolytes. Electrolytes of flocculating agents are added to induce particle flocculation by neutralizing surface charges. Gentle mixing. The suspension is gently mixed to allow flocculation without causing irreversible aggregation. Stabilization. Stabilizers might be added to prevent excessive flocculation and settling. Packaging. The final flocculated suspension is packaged. Now last is stability problems of suspension and method to overcome. Stability problems can arise in suspensions due to various factors, including particle settling, aggregation, flocculation, creaming, and physical or chemical degradation of the active ingredients. Here are some common stability problems associated with suspensions and methods to overcome them. First, particle settling. Problem. Large and heavy particles settle at the bottom of the container, leading to non-uniform dosing in appearance. Solution. Use proper wetting agents during dispersion to ensure even particle distribution. Incorporate flocculating agents or stabilizers to prevent excessive settling. Employ controlled particle size reduction to minimize sedimentation rate. 
regularly instruct users to shake the container before use. Second, aggregation and agglomeration problem. Particles aggregate or form larger clusters, resulting in reduced stability and potential clogging of dispensing systems. Solution. Use suitable stabilizers or surfactants to repel particle-particle interactions. Optimize the formulation to maintain electrostatic repulsion between particles. Avoid excessive agitation during preparation to prevent particle damage. Third, flocculation. Problem. Weak particle aggregates, flocculates, form, leading to non-uniform settling and dispersion upon shaking. Solution. Utilize flocculating agents to promote controlled flocculation that can be easily redispersed. Optimize the concentration of flocculating agents to balance stability and ease of redispersion. Fourth, creaming. Problem. Density differences between the solid particles and the liquid medium cause particles to rise or sink, resulting in non-uniformity. Solution. Use suitable stabilizers to prevent creaming by increasing viscosity or altering the density of the liquid phase. Ensure that the suspension is well homogenized during formulation to minimize creaming. Fifth, post wall ripening. Problem. Smaller particles dissolve and then redeposit onto larger particles, causing changes in particle size distribution. Solution. Optimize particle size distribution during formulation to minimize the occurrence of Ostwald ripening. Consider using stabilizers or protective colloids to prevent particle coalescence. Text. Physical degradation. Problem. Particles break down, leading to changes in particle size, shape, and overall stability. Solution. Carefully choose appropriate particle size reduction techniques to prevent excessive mechanical stress. Use stabilizers or suspending agents to maintain particle integrity. Seventh, chemical degradation. Problem. Active ingredients degrade chemically due to interactions with the dispersing medium or other components. Solution. Select a suitable dispersing medium that minimizes chemical reactions with the active ingredient. Use antioxidants or other stabilizers to protect the active ingredient from chemical degradation. Eighth, Container compatibility. Problem. Interaction between the suspension and the container material can lead to leaching, degradation, or contamination. Solution. Choose container materials that are compatible with the suspension components. Conduct compatibility studies to ensure that the container does not adversely affect the suspension. Thanks for watching this video. And, if this was helpful then do a subscribe this channel. Thank you.